Hello everyone, it's me, Anderson West, aka Films by W, and welcome back to my channel. Let's get straight into it. So my friends at ProAV and DZO let me use their new Pavel 2X Anamorphics on a short film that I've had in development. That short film was 7x7x7, and I'm gonna talk a little bit more about that project in a future video. Now, I didn't shoot the film. My friend and DP, Ben Halford, uh, shout out to Ben Halford, you can follow him in Halford Films. With this film, unlike our previous film, Book of Love, it's a much more serious topic, and there's a lot of flashbacks and flash forwards. With these lenses swirl at bokeh that, you know, have that barrel distortion that we all love and associate with anamorphic lenses, it really lent itself to the story we were trying to tell with the film. But the size of these lenses was also quite intriguing. Now, the Atlas Orions and the Laua Proteuses, which I'll put in the same bracket range, they're massive lenses. You know, we're in a tight space on a bus. This film is set in a bus. And if you're having a long protruding lens, then that makes it a bit harder to kind of move around. So having the smaller lenses that uh, the Pavos were was really interesting because I think the other thing about them they're all the same size. And I would say they're comparable to a normal cinema lens, like a ultra prime or a super speed in size. I just felt it kept everything quite compact. We had three lenses, which were the 28, the 40 and the 75. So the Pavo 2X anamorphics are two times squeeze anamorphics. So for instance, the 40 mil Pavo, the field of view on the width of the lens is actually the same that a 20 mil prime would give you, but the high and depth of field is still that of a 40 mil. So again, it's squeezing that image out. So when you de-squeeze it in post-production, what you're getting is those really interesting lens effects, the barrel distortion, the nice bokeh that just has a otherworldly feel to it, but you're still having a depth of field that a 40 mil would normally have. Now these lenses all have a T-stop of 2.1, which is uniform across the set. The image circle across all of these lenses is 31.9 millimeters. And they cover a Super 35 4x3 sensor. So if you try to use this on a full frame camera, you'll start to see some vignetting. I did a quick test with the Cinema 6Ks from anamorphic mode, which is a 6x5 mode. And you can see here that you can start to see the vignetting at the edges of the lens. This is the 40 mil. So the ideal camera to use this on is one that can have a four x three super 35 mode. You know, the cinema 6K is a great option for that. I think the Sony Venice also has a mode like that, as well as the Alexa mini LF, the Alexa 35, the red Raptor, et cetera, et cetera. There's a growing list of cameras that can fit in this mode. And I'm sure I'm missing some out. So we're out in location here with the Pavo Anamorphics. I thought I'd get out of the office and talk a little bit about using them on location. But first, the first shoot we had, it was just, oh, I prefer the 40, let's shoot as much as the 40. But I I actually love the three set. I think the 70, this is, these are demo units. And I think the current models, they've improved the sharpness on the 75 a little bit. But the 75, I think really gives an intensity to it. At first I was like, oh, it's a bit too soft. But when you use it more, you have essentially a portrait lens from a 75 and you're having the width of a 35. There's just an energy about the frame. And I think that using 2X anamorphics, the best way I can describe it is just a great energy to your image. I, you know, especially when you're doing handheld, you're rocking. Yeah, I just like, it's hard to kind of quantify, but you definitely feel an emotion. When it comes to talking about like the visual quality of uh, anamorphics, it's a really tricky one because it's the imperfections I feel that make anamorphic feel like anamorphic. You know, when you watch old films like The Good, The Bad and The Ugly or Once Upon a Time in the West, like, yeah, I like Westerns, they didn't look perfect. You know, when you, you know, focused and 
you know, there was the barrel distortion, so the edge of the frame looked a bit strange. Or when you pulled focus, there was a lot of lens breathing. But that was something that was always accepted with anamorphics. So it's hard for me to say whether that's right or wrong on this lens. As you can see how they perform here in, in these tests. Yeah, I, I thought that they don't, it's not distracting. It doesn't throw you off. But then also looking at how the lens perform wide open, you know, here in the 40 mil, you can see it's a little bit softer even on the 40 mil, which was the sharpest lens I thought from the set. But again, it's that dreamlike quality, which I like that aesthetic. I really like that. Now, I'm not the best person to go and pixel peep and say, oh, this is too much chromatic aberration or whatever. I just love how it looked and my DP did as well. And it really added to the story. I think a lot of people on different types of projects will find a use for this look. Now these lenses don't flare a ton. They don't flare that much. When I actually start to think about it, you know what, I'm not that bothered I didn't have it. It's just about tastes. What we did find when we wanted extreme close-ups, we just used a diopter. Each you know, just buy a diopter with this and you'll get some extreme close-ups. There's not many anamorphics that have a close focus of like a macro style. He, ben also uses extender. And what we found ourselves doing was using the 40 mil with an extender to make it like a 65 mil, really, to give us that. And again, that's that flexibility of using the 40 mil. That was a trick that we used quite often. Uh, and to be honest, that was the DP's preference to doing that as opposed to using the 75 mil. Now, again, I'm reiterating, it was a pre-production pre unit. After we finished the production of the film and returned the lenses, Dizito actually announced a few more lenses to their set and they added a 32, a 55, a 180, a 135, and a 100, and most importantly, a 65 mil macro lens. As I discussed, when we used the extender, we added about 20 mil and created that 65, and as well used a diopter to get those close. So I'm sure that, again, this is an example of listening to feedback from testers, and this would have been a perfect lens to use. I think that one is a 2.8, I think the 180, is a 2.8 as well. So they don't get to keep the 2.1 aperture, but it's again showing that DZO is trying to make a complete set for all filmmaking purposes. In terms of close focuses, the lenses we had, the 28 had a close focus of one foot and four inches, the 40 of one foot six inches, and the 75 of two feet and nine inches. Again, the newly released 65 mil has a close focus of one foot and 2.4 inches for the lenses we had the 28 and the 40 were very similar in size whereas the 75 mil was a little bit longer but not much longer maybe an inch or so in terms of the weight the 28 mil was 1203 grams the 40 was 1300 grams and the 75 was 1466 grams so all fairly lightweight for anamorphic lenses and they all had a 270 degrees focus throw. Again, that's the 28, 40, and the 75. And I think in the, even in the newer lenses that are announced, only the 65 has a different focus throw, which I think is 300 degrees. In terms of the lens dimensions, they're all uniform with a front diameter of 95 millimeters. On the short film, when we were shooting on a gimbal, we just used a Tilted Mirage matte box that clipped perfectly on the front of this. And 95 mil is a standard size across the industry, so you'll be able to find clip-on matte boxes for this, no problem. These lenses are uniform across the set, which when you're using it in production is a lifesaver as you're not worrying about if you have to use a different matte box for the lens or different focus throw for the lens. It's all very similar and is really quick and easy to use when working with a team in production. One thing that was really that's really useful about these lenses is that you can adjust the back focus on the lenses with a little knob you you just twist and move up and down. And I believe you can switch these to EF mount and that's gonna be really helpful in adjusting the back focus. Now, who, who are these lenses for? 
think these these lenses could probably shoot any movie really any high-end movie because again lens choice is about your, the emotion that you as a director want it's not necessarily about like your perfect image quality it's more about how does that frame and how does that lens make you feel because the lens is the audience's eye in your movie if you if you want a more dreamlike quality have a look at these lenses the thing about these lenses and i'm not going to tell you what is too expensive or cheap in when you're using cinema grade quality i.e having consistent uh, focus throws or consistent colors the mechanics of the lens are quite good even having that um, back focus adjustment that's a really high quality item and, uh, and the build quality lenses are really high and in the past for that on a 2x anamorphic you're paying a lot of money even for a daily hire i'm talking one thousand or two thousand dollars a day or two thousand pounds a day here in the uk just to rent out a sets of uh of Ma ari master anamorphics etc etc they're really expensive. With the Pavo Anamorphics retailing for the three set for 15,000, or you can get them for about 5,400 pounds here in the UK or $5,500 in the US each. If you're not looking to buy them, they're a really great rental item. I know there's a few places in the UK that, that rent these out and I'm seeing prices for a set for a day of 250 pounds or 300 pounds a day. That's the kind of price I used to pay for like a basic, cinema lens sets such as like the compact primes or even the canon cnes so being able to have anamorphics of this quality for that price is fantastic and i think that's something definitely i want to look at in the future when i want to use these lenses on other jobs so would i recommend them now the the big comparison people will make is that mid-end uh, Atlas Orions and the Proteus from Lawa. It's just about tastes, but in terms of that mid-end option, it's great. So those are my thoughts on the DZ Pavo Anamorphics. You know, you can, if you want to check out those lenses, you know, check them out at Pro AV. If you want to leave a comment, see what you think about the lenses, let me know. So thanks for watching everyone. Remember to like and subscribe. Again, I'm going to be back with weekly, as much as possible videos. Um, but until the next time, stay tuned.